Welcome back. Today we got a, a little project here as a new candidate. It's actually a Toshiba uh, C660 laptop, which is probably about six or seven years old. I can't remember. I have it for a long time. Um, it's my work laptop, which I use on site for diagnostic and things like that. The problem is it works. If I put an external, if I plug in an external monitor here, it works fine. And if you use a torch, uh, just shining onto the screen, you can see there is the screen is working. So we have a backlight problem, and uh, there is two options: either, either it's the inverter which sits down here, or the um, the lamps have died. Uh, it's most likely the inverter or the power to the inverter. Uh, sometimes the the wires in the hinges go bad. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Toshiba because they are uh, very durable. I have another Toshiba which is, uh, I think it is 12 or 13 years old. And I've got another one which is 15 years old. Um, I used them for certain jobs here and they still work perfect. Sorry, it's always the same. If you need the camera, the battery is flat. Anyway. Um, I can't remember where I stopped talking here. Uh, yeah, so again, problems are pretty obvious. It's it's the the backlight doesn't come on. So what we need to do is uh, make that backlight to work again. And uh, the various different backlight systems. This is a fluorescent backlight, which has two tubes either here or here. I don't know exactly where, uh, and a power inverter strip down here. Um, so we need to get it open and uh, it's usually pretty simple. I never did one of these <coughs> but knowing they're all pretty much the same uh, it shouldn't be a big issue to look at least into it and see what's wrong. Uh, hopefully that's all visible here. Uh, you need to pry out these little plastic caps here there's some plastic thingies here, I just pry them out. Uh, and we need some something to put this little stuff. It's it's just stickers. It's not on the older ones it's basically a, a plug, a little plug, but on these ones apparently it's just stickers. Just the screws are tiny so you wanna you don't wanna lose them. Um then just Get the stickers off. As you can see, there they're quite sticky. So just get them off, and later on you can put them on or not. I don't care actually, because it's just cosmetic. Make it look better. The distance rubbers are here. I always use a the original packing material. Uh, on the keyboard, it's dirty, I know, but uh, again, I use that on dirty, on side where it's quite dirty. Um, but what I always do, I keep the packing material. It's basically a piece of cloth which was sitting on the keyboard, because on on, on most of the widescreen laptops, if you carry it around, the keyboard is flexing and it's actually rubbing on your screen. It has very little scratches. There are a few scratches here, but. Honestly, this thing is a, is a piece of work equipment. It's been used uh, in in quite dirty environments. Normally, you should remove the battery, make sure everything is powered off. But uh, it's not, gonna, not much happening here. So just get rid of the screws here, and then it technically should pry off. And you just need to get into the corners. Make sure you're not going to bend the whole thing. There are some special tools around where you can actually get into this. I think it's the bottom left where you're going to start. Here you go. And then just. I find. 
gently. It's just a, a bunch of catches here and you just need to get them off. And just be careful. It's uh, it's plastic, so you don't want to break it. And just follow across. You can use some sort of plastic knife, whatever you can find. The screwdriver is not ideal, uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. If I put a few more scratches on this thing, because it has a lot of scratches. Uh, the bottom is a bit more challenging because you need to, you can't really get to the bottom, so you need to pull from the inside, which is not ideal, but it should come off at some point. And then it's just getting off here. So here we go. Apparently, I got the feeling this is an LED display, so what I said is probably not true. We may just have a hinge cable problem. Unbelievable how much garbage is sitting in that, in that thing. Uh, yeah, I was expecting an LCD inverter uh, down here. Like LED backlight. That's if you expect something and then you find something different. I uh, don't know if that's visible again. Yeah, so again, so this is Wi-Fi. That's the camera. And on this display, we only have one cable. So it's most likely an LED display just power it up and uh, see what it does here you see it's coming on here with windows see that don't know turn the light off see that you can see the screen is working but the backlight doesn't so we need to figure out uh, so it can be a hinge problem because obviously this thing has been opened and closed so many times. Um, I think the easiest way of checking that is actually removing the display, flip it to the uh, flip it onto the keyboard and check if we have voltage on the backlight. But I need to figure out how to remove that. It's loose at the top. And it seems there is let me figure out which screws are to open to get that flipped over. I'll come back. So we decided to we need to take the top cover off. Uh, while you're there it's always a good idea to clean the fan as well because there is some debris inside. And if you blow out you can see there is a lot of debris and dirt coming out. What you're going to do is, all the screws on the C660 and the, I think the 650 is the same, just remove all the screws marked F8 and uh, just take them out. And there is one down here, so you need to take that cover off. It's pretty dusty inside. So there's one screw here and this retains here. So And then just pry it off gently and it comes off and then you can get to this screw. I think there is no other ones. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll find out. So let's turn the, let's turn the thing around and open it back up gently because we have no support for the keyboard here uh, for the for the display. This strip, this plastic strip, has to come off. Otherwise, you're not going to get the keyboard out, and you need to get a keyboard out to get the cover off. So. Uh, We'll figure that out. Well, we figured it out. It's uh, it sits here, and if you go underneath these, where between the function keys, where nothing is, and you can actually pull it, and it comes off here. It just holds with these little strips here, and then you can see here are some screws. They are for the keyboard. 
with four screws just get them out uh, remember the length these are the shortest ones here on the keyboard the other ones at the bottom are all the same length and uh, yeah while you're there it's always good to give it a good clean because again this thing is used on sites where it's dusty and dirty and oily greasy smeary so uh, there will be a keyboard cable somewhere we need to figure out where that is it's gonna be down here you're gonna push the white retainer to the back don't pull it out if you pull that straight out you got a problem and then you should be able to pop it off so here it is, here it is. it's out now and uh, yeah, if you put it upside down and give it a clean, and you can see here, you can see here how dirty the fan is. It's always a good idea to clean that at the same time while, while you're there. So we're just checking if there's any more screws. Apparently not. So we should be able to pull the cover. I can't see any more. That's just a, a reminder for me to think about my memory stick and uh, the phone so let's start in one corner here I'm pretty sure there's some we need to pull this one as well because this one is actually the touchpad and if you don't pull it you're gonna break it so and be very gentle with those they come off really easy if you hopefully that's visible these white retainers you pull them out and it releases the pressure from the from the from the contact here and then you can just pull it out so i can't see any more screws so it should come off Let me double check at the bottom if there are any more left should be all of them and you can bear with me i've never done this model of laptop here so for me it's still a bit too sticky here the screws are out yeah, there's no screw left so can't see ah oh, there is one more yeah Two actually you know and it's the same length as the bottom ones these are the bottom screws the same length and there's one here one here I was guessing there was somewhere but I couldn't see them because yeah it's late and I need that thing tomorrow so we need to figure out how we're gonna fix it quickly and if you go into the corners, just pry gently. Still reluctant here to come out. I think it has to come off at the back first. There's quite a bit of resistance here. Let's see if there's another screw left somewhere. Let me double check if there is another screw at the bottom somewhere. So we figured it out. Uh, you just go around and find find the tabs and push them in and then it comes out. Uh, obviously the power switch needs to come out as well. Uh, this is just this cable here. Here we go. So now we got the whole drama here. What I can see is really dirty. Uh, so what we need is the power switch is the power switch what is that ah that's the speaker so we don't need them the power switch is here so this is the speakers we don't need them to for testing um the idea is actually testing voltage levels here it's just amazing how dirty it is inside uh, this is a heat pipe so the processor is down here and uh, processor is down here and this is basically a works like a fridge uh, the fan is actually cooling that 
and um, so it's it's basically refrigerant inside. It vaporizes, goes here, it condenses here. The fan is blowing out, but the fan is extremely dirty, so we need. I blow that out every now and then, but uh, once we're there, we can take the fan out, give that a clean as well. It's easy to disconnect. Just pull the pull the cable and pull the fan, and give it a proper clean. Uh, and also inside of that heat sink here there might be some dirt okay uh, as far as I know there is a fuse most likely that's just the battery uh, I remember I had it once and it was not coming up with a backlight it could be a poor connection yeah, having an LED backlight changes the whole thing because uh, you can't really test if the inverter is working and just supply extra voltage from somewhere else. So we need to have a, another plan to figure out what we're going to do here. Uh, it could be a full connection, it could be a, a faulty cable because obviously th this is going to be bent and bent and bent all the time. So it's quite possible that this cable is broken. Uh, to figure that out any fuse here. It says made in China. Not very convincing. However it's a Toshiba and uh, I I was never disappointed by Toshiba uh, devices in general. My my television is a Toshiba Rexa as well and uh, it just works. It's a great piece of kit. Uh, let me dig a little bit deeper because it's gonna be a bit boring if I'm just poking around here. Um, once I have a bit more of an idea what's going on, uh, we'll come back and show what the problem is. Mm -hmm.